Hey guys, it's Cube Root here, and today I'm bringing you a much requested second episode of Cube Root. This episode we will be digging into the roots of the n by n by n, from 2 by 2 by 2 all the way up to 17 by 17 by 17. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the second episode of Cube Root. The 2 by 2, also known as the Pocket Cube, first started in 1970 when Larry Nichols filed a patent for his 2 by 2 cube that would be held together with magnets. In 1972, he received the US patent shown here. The patent focused on the 2x2 puzzle but mentioned the possibility of there being larger versions. Erno Rubik, whom I will go over in depth once we move on to the 3x3, patented his version of the pocket cube in March of 1983. In 1985, a US district court ruled that Rubik's cube infringed the Nichols patent, but in 1986, the Court of Appeals ruled that only the 2x2 Rubik's pocket cube was guilty of infringement and not the 3x3. I'm sorry, but I was not quite sure what happened after the court ruled this, but I thought it was important to share. East Sheen, a well-known brand, patented the 2x2 in October of 1998. Nowadays, the best-speed cubing 2x2s are arguably the Wit 2v1, Dian Zanchi 2x2, Moyu Lingpo, Feng Shi Shi Shuang, Feng Shi Xing Yu, and Cyclone Boys 2x2. Other brands, such as Lan Lan, Ghost Han, Shang Shao, and East Sheen, as well as some others, do have their own 2x2s, but they are not known for being as great as the brands mentioned first. Some popular 2x2 shape mods that can be bought on eBay are the Darth Vader, Mickey Mouse, and Homer Simpson 2x2. There is also a pillow version for toddlers to play with. There are two versions of this, and I will have a link to Red KB's video where he goes over them more in depth if you want to know more about those. Now on to 3x3. The Rubik's Cube we see in stores today started in 1974 when Erno Rubik worked at the Department of Interior Design at the Academy of Applied Arts and Crafts in Budapest, Hungary. A lot of people believe he built the cube as a teaching tool to help his students understand 3D objects. However, he actually was trying to solve a structural problem of moving the parts independently without the entire mechanism falling apart. His first attempt at doing this was with rubber bands, but it sadly failed. He decided to have the pieces hold themselves together by their shape, which worked. He apparently put adhesive paper of a different color on each side and started to scramble what was arguably the world's first Rubik's Cube. It took Erno a little over a month to find the solution to his puzzle, and the cube's first model was used to help him explain spatial relationships to his students. Erno applied for a Hungarian patent in 1975, and he received it in 1977. The first cubes were made and distributed in Hungary, where it originated, and they were first known as Magic Cubes until the cube was sold to the rest of the world. This was done when Tom Kremer, a toy specialist, saw the puzzle at the Nuremberg Toy Fair in 1979 and agreed to sell it to the rest of the world. Ideal Toy Company took on the distribution of the Magic Cube and changed the name to Rubik's Cube. The first Rubik's Cubes were distributed in 1980, and you can find some of these that were released then on eBay today. I personally have one in my collection, and I think it's a great addition. Speed cubing was eventually born, and the rest is history. There are a countless number of solutions that can be found online, and there are many methods that are used to solve the cube. The most popular is known as CFOP, which starts with the cross, then F2L, which stands for first two layers, OLL, or orienting the last layer, and PLL, permuting the last layer. Other common methods are ZZ and RU, which I'm not very familiar with, but if you want to look more into that, you can go ahead and look up a tutorial on YouTube. Eventually, competitions started happening around the world as the Rubik's Cube got more popular. Now, almost every weekend, there is a competition or two happening somewhere in the world, and those, along with a lot of other interesting information, such as the world records, can be found on the WCA website, which I will have a link to in the description. There is a long list of companies that sell 3x3s, so I will not be going over all of them. However, the most popular speed cubes are from Diane, Moryu, YJ, Yushin, and Gans. A good beginner's 3x3 in my opinion would be the Shangsha Aurora and the YJ Guanlong which is extremely cheap but an amazing cube. I'll have a link to where you can buy these cubes in the description. There are a ton of 3x3 shape mods but I'll just be covering the most popular ones briefly. These would be the Barrel 3x3 which as you can see by its shape looks like a barrel. The Fisher Cube which to get that is you cut off part of the corners and you just glue that part on to the edges however you can do some modifications to make it look a little bit nicer. And then the Ghost Cube. Look forward to a future episode of Cube Root that is all about ghost cubes because those are amazing and there's a lot of interesting facts about them. A fun fact about a Rubik's Cube is that in the movie Pursuit of Happiness, a 3x3 is solved throughout the movie by Will Smith's character, and off camera he was taught to solve it by Tyson Mao, who is a co-founder and a former board member of the World Cubing Association. The Rubik's Revenge, which is simply a 4x4, was patented by Peter Sebastiani in December of 1983 and was originally going to be called Sebastiani's Cube. Due to the popularity of the Rubik's Cube, they decided to change the name to Rubik's Revenge to attract the fans of the original Rubik's Cube. As many of you know, there are no centers on even layered n by n by n puzzles, so there is often parity during the OLL and or PLL stages of the 3x3 step. 
When solving even layered puzzles, it is important to know the color scheme of the solved cubes so that you can place your centers correctly. And there has also been a lot of interesting mechanisms when it comes to a 4x4. The most commonly seen mechanisms include the VQ mechanism, which has been shown to be the most viable mechanism for even layered puzzles to perform well, the ball core, as well as the East Sheen mechanism, which was arguably the best mechanism before V-Cubes came around. The most common speed cubing 4x4s as of this video are the Moyu Aosu, Yushin 4x4, and Shangxia 4x4. Some other brands include MF8 and Dian, V-Cube, Mefferts, and X-Cube. An interesting fact about 4x4 is that the ball core was used in the first 4x4 and is the only version to have a minimalist mechanism with one hidden part and the rest being external parts. No other 4x4 or even layered cube above 4x4 has this mechanism as of yet. The only other puzzle to use this mechanism as of this video is the new Rubik's 2x2. The 5x5 cube's earliest appearance from what I could find was 1982 and was invented by Udo Krell and produced by Mefferts. This 5x5 was originally patented by Udo Krell in 1986 and then in 1998, tiled 5x5s made by Mefferts were released. The Rubik's 5x5 came out in 2002 after Mefferts had stopped producing the tiled 5x5s and the 5x5's concept was to basically stretch out the 3x3 and kind of jam pieces in between those 3x3 pieces. The Rubik's 5x5 is also known as the Professor Cube. East Sheen patented their 5x5 in 2000, and V-Cube patented theirs in 2003. Along with the 5x5 patent, V-Cube also patented a method creating cubes up to 11x11. The most popular speed cubing 5x5s are the Moyu Huachuang, Shangxiao, and V-Cube 5. Other brands include Lanlan, Mefferts, Ghost Hand, Dianjing, and more. A fun fact about the Rubik's 5x5 is that at some point it was known as the Rubik's Wan, W-A-H-N. The first 6x6 was made in 2002 by Daniel Tseng. This 6x6 was made possible with magnets, which would now not be acceptable, so this 6x6 was not what one would call a successful 6x6. The next 6x6 was invented by V-Cube. The V-Cube 6x6 incorporated a clicking mechanism to keep the hidden middle layer in alignment with the rest of the pieces. The most popular mod that had been done to get rid of the clickiness, because a lot of people are not a big fan of them, was Me, Myself, and Pies mod, which involves eliminating the clicking mechanism, gluing two inner mechanism parts to a polar center, and using pins and four other centers to keep the inner middle layer in alignment. The X-Cube mechanism in the X-Cube 4 came along and was adapted to other even layered cubes and became the new most used mod to the mechanisms even in the V-Cube 4, which was the third instance they did not follow their patents. This mechanism essentially did the same thing as the Pi Mod, but in a more simple manner. Shang Xiao, another popular brand, released their 6x6 in 2011, while Moyu released their 6x6, known as their Moyu Aoshi, in 2014. The 6x6 is the line of proportional big cubes because it is the last n by n by n that can be proportional, while the 7x7 and above currently cannot without the use of magnets or a mechanism that allows parts to overhang and still be locked into place. The first mass produced 7x7 was by V Cube. This 7x7 is referred to as pillowed because of its appearance, and this was due to it being impossible to make a proportional 7x7 without use of a special mechanism or magnets as mentioned before. There will be a video up above showing one of these mechanisms that Oscar Medemeter did in his unproportional cube. This mechanism obviously is not the best and most likely won't be applied to speed cubes, but it might be possible to see a proportional 7x7 in the future. To fix this issue, anything 7x7 and above are disproportional or pillowed. This was picked up after Tony Fisher showed off his cubic 7x7 made from a pillowed 7x7 because it allowed for way more room in a puzzle without having the pillowed style. Shang Xiao made a cubic 7x7 as well as a mini version, which is the more popular of the two. Moyu also released their 7x7, known as the Moyu Aofu, in 2014, and it is pillowed just like the V-Cube. A fun fact about 7x7 is that it is the only pillowed cube that is allowed in competition. The first 8x8 was made by a mod using 7x7s and a ball core from a 4x4 in 2007 by the founder of the popular brand, Diane. This first 8x8 was pillowed. The next 8x8 was a cubic one made by Shang Xiao. VQ released their 8x8 after Shang Xiao but did not follow their proposed patent, but rather worked with MF8 and had this puzzle made in China as opposed to Greece, which is where all the other VQ products have been made up until this point. The first instance of a 9x9 being shown off originated from Tony Fisher where he made footage of a 9x9 puzzle, turning and making a checkerboard. The footage was originally released in 2006. Two years after the upload, Tony made a video of the raw footage and showed that it was simply a hoax and that he used some clever video editing to get that effect. The first functional 9x9 that was put up on the market was by YJ, which was pillowed, and it was not of the greatest quality. 
Shangshao later released their Cubic 9x9, which was a big success in 2012. This cube, along with all other high order n by n by n puzzles by Shangshao, is extremely smooth. The first 10x10 to be available through the 3D printing was made by Gregoire Fenning in 2012, but not much light was shown onto that at the time. The first 10x10 to be available through mass production was made by Shangshao in 2013. As of this video, Shangshao has not made an n by n by n higher than 10x10. And keep in mind that technically these higher layer Shangshao cubes are knockoffs of V-Cube due to their patent mentioned earlier, even though V-Cube has not released anything higher than an 8x8 as of this video. The Yushin 11x11 came out in 2010, and the only video I was able to find of it in 2010 can be shown above. This 11x11 is technically not a legitimate 11x11, again due to the V-Cube patent, but it is the only one on the market, and I know from experience that it turns pretty well for its size. I would highly recommend you guys go out and buy the 11x11, Unless you are not a big fan of getting knockoff puzzles, then I would wait for V-Cube to make their 11x11 using their patent, which I'm not sure will actually ever be done. The first working prototype to break the 11x11 border set by the V-Cube patent was a pillowed 12x12. The inventor was Leslie Lee, and was shown made in 2009. The puzzle used a special variant of the V-Cube mechanism. The second 12x12 might look very similar to the 10x10 mentioned, as the second 12x12 was cubic and also created by Gregor Fenning and Klaus Wenneker. And as of recently, Moryu has made designs for a 12x12 in the future, but have yet to release the design stage. In 2014, Moryu released their mass-produced 13x13, which is the most expensive mass-produced puzzle at the moment. It sells for about $300 on most stores, and I'm really glad I have this on my collection. The 13x13 is pillowed and turns amazing for its size, it's extremely smooth, and I'm 100% sure I'm bringing this to US Nationals this year, so if you want to try turning one, you can come find me at Nats. In the video shown above, to Joss for the Stark, talks about pictures released by Moyu of a 15x15. In the video, it looks as if Moyu started designing their 15x15 in 2013 and planned to release it in 2015. I have not heard that much about it recently, but I'm sure word will spread once the time comes for that. The first 15x15 to be made was made by Tony Fisher, as can be seen in the video. Just kidding, he released a video of a 13x13 that looks like a 15x15 because of the stickers. The 17x17, also known as the over at the top cube, was invented by Oscar Van Deventer. If you have not seen any of his puzzles, this man is a genius when it comes to designing puzzles, and I will have a link to his channel in the description of this video, and I highly recommend you guys spend a few minutes checking out his YouTube channel looking at all of his puzzles he's designed. This puzzle was 3D printed through Shapeways in 2010, and it is the biggest n by n by n that has ever been made. After VQ patented cubes up to 11 by 11 the 12 by 12 was custom made and presented on the Twisty Puzzles forum. Oscar Van Deventer saw this and decided to design an even bigger cube, which is this beast of a puzzle, the 17x17x17. 17 by 17 by 17. Using a mechanism he calls floating anchors, he was able to achieve this. The first design would have costed 3000 US dollars if purchased through Shapeways. Klaus Wenneker stepped in and offered to sponsor a prototype, which can be seen in the video above. In the end, there were four prototypes until the finished puzzle could be presented. Sorting the pieces alone took Klaus 5 hours because Oscar added small numbers to every single piece to make them easily distinguishable. The 17x17x17 17 by 17 by 17 has been acknowledged as a Guinness World Record for being the highest order Rubik's Cube. To my knowledge, only one person has bought this puzzle from Shapeways, and here is a video of him scrambling it up above. The person who bought it let RedKB borrow the cube for a few videos, and I will have links to both of those videos in the description. Here I have put together a menu that consists of all of the current single, average, and blind records for 2x2 two two through 4x4. Four four. Here are all the records for 5x5 five five through 7x7, seven seven, for 8x8 eight eight through 13x13, thirteen thirteen, as well as 2x2, two 6x6, two, six six, and 7x7 seven seven blind, I have put the unofficial records as they are not official WCA events. If you do not have annotations turned on, I recommend you turn them on if you are interested in watching any of these videos. A lot of the bigger cubes do not have a video uploaded and might not be 100% accurate, but I got all the unofficial solves from YouTube and the link in the description. For all the records, both official and unofficial, without videos, I have put a picture of an adorable puppy for your entertainment. To see the times for those solves, please check the WCA website and the unofficial world records page. Again, both will be in the description. By the time you are watching this video, it is quite possible some of these records have been broken. To see all current official world records, check out the WCA website or the unofficial world record page for unofficial world records. That's about it for the second episode of Cube Root. I was extremely happy with the way the first episode turned out and I got so much positive feedback from all of you guys and I really appreciate it. Look forward to a lot more episodes in the future. I love making these because I learn a lot about the topic and I hope you guys do too. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on this episode as well as what other topics you'd want to see in a future Cube Root episode. Before I get into the usual outro stuff, 
I want to give a big thanks to Christy Angelis for helping me out with this video. He pointed me to a lot of different websites that had a bunch of information. He told me a lot of stuff he knew. He knows a lot about the history of cubing and uh, he also 3D, 3D designs puzzles and he will also be in a future episode of Cube Root. The day I'm recording this is March 28th, which actually is his birthday, so I know this video won't be out for a day or two after that, but I wanted to say a big thanks and happy birthday to Chris DeAngelis. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Please leave a like if you like this video. This video's question is, what color is the dress on the screen? I hope you all enjoyed, and thanks for watching.